wonderful Thursday, the 22nd of October in the 2020. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special edition of the assignment program. I'm your host. My name is Andrew Mwansa. Now, Zambia Police is one of the departments under the Ministry of Home Affairs whose main responsibility and mandate is to enforce the law against all forms of crime and disorder in order to maintain peace and order throughout Zambia. Now, as we slowly approach 2021 elections, civil society organizations and other political parties have lamented that the Zambia Police Service is undermining Zambia's democratic process and the multi-party credentials through its unfair application of the rule of law. And another huge concern among many citizens is, are we safe ahead of the 2021 uh, general elections with reports that the police have been abducted and have been beaten by uh, cadres? My guest tonight is Minister Responsible for, for Home Affairs, Honorable Stephen Campion, who are discussing Zambia's state of security. Minister, good evening, and uh, welcome to the assignment. Good evening, Andrew. Thank you so much for inviting me to your assignment program, and good evening to our dear viewers out there. I should make mention that we've been waiting for you so that you could answer millions of questions that the people of Zambia want you to answer, Honorable. I hope I'll be able to answer that, but certainly I would have also loved to be here much earlier. Yeah, yeah. But as you know, um, uh, home affairs is uh, is got a lot of mm. uh, responsibilities and. Uh, uh, portfolio functions that um, uh, this uh, one single minister has to attend to mm. on a daily basis. But I greatly appreciate that you're here now. It's a pleasure to be here too. Those joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus, Bouquet Channel 1, uh, the top said decoder Channel 104, you'll be able to come through and give us your contributions via the number that is scrolling down your TV screen. That is plus 26097859468. Those that are joining the conversation from across the continent of Africa, we are using our social media platforms, our hand on Facebook and YouTube is Ask Movie TV. Get to the comment section, comment, and we'll be able to forward your questions to the minister responsible for home affairs. We're discussing Zambia's state of security ahead of the 2021 general elections. Let's begin off, minister, with uh, one of the critical issues that is trending and a lot of people are talking about. And I'll allow my director to play me a video of Mrs. Kambuili and how she was handled. That was, I think, on Tuesday. Minister, that is a picture of your friend's wife, nearly undressed. How would you describe that incident? Well, I mean, the, the incident is obviously regrettable. And um, the only unfortunate part is that uh, you got a clip of uh, part of the instance. Mm. And certainly, that instance didn't start on itself. So it would have been interesting to see where the, gen the, the genesis of that whole commotion started from. Because that's a commotion. To culminate into that last part where someone is being, uh, that's an arrest being effected. And uh, uh, certainly you have been to the courts yourself. Mm. And the police are always there to maintain order there at the courts. How often do you see them do that? That would be the question. 
I often do, do, do see them do that. People appear in courts on a daily basis for different reasons. And the police are only there to ensure that the court premises is, um, uh, you know, are secured and there is order so that those um, uh, men and women of the bench are able to discharge their functions uh, um, uh, as assigned to them. So, unfortunate instance, but what would have been interesting was to see from where it started from, because that's a commotion, and I do, you don't see police do that every often, do they? So those are the questions. Mm. But obviously, the, so you can't well, well, you can't single from. you can't single you know and and um, you 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 can't judge the police on one uh, single incident like that, and without knowing the circumstances. When the police are doing their work, when they are effective, but, but uh, under normal circumstances, is, is is that professional? Is that how the police are trained to conduct themselves? So what do you say unprofessional in that clip? What you say? If I'm asking. The undressing of a woman is professional, according yeah. to your minister? Look, if there was just orderliness, jump on the car, we mm -hmm. go to the police, and someone jumps on the car, do you think it would have been like that? But you have seen someone throwing herself on the ground, and uh, uh, that's not to say it was a present uh, event. That's not to say. So that's what I'm saying. It could actually show you that where it started from, maybe it was, uh, you know, an aggression that could have been avoided. But there is a woman, Honorable Minister. My dear friend, unfortunately our job mm. doesn't look at who you are. And the job of the police doesn't segregate. If you commit a crime, whether you are a woman or you are a man, the police, unfortunately, if you go to our correctional services, mm. We have got women there, mothers, who have left children. Yeah. But they're in the correction service facilities. Mm. Because but, but, but does that justify really what, what transpired, Honorable Minister? Uh, and, and maybe just to bring you up to speed with uh, whatever happened. I was mm. there when it happened. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Kambudi did slap one of the police officers. And, uh, you were there? I was there. Okay. I was there. I, you know, I couldn't be speaking from the point of you know, ignorance. I was there. Very I good. saw exactly what transpired. Mm. She slapped one of the police officers. And in, in turn, you know, whatever you're seeing on screen, that is what transpired. But also, you need to understand. So that, that, that's what I'm saying. That's why, Andrew. That's what I'm saying. It would have been very good for you mm. and for the people of Zambia if you were there and the people that were taking that shot to, should, to, to, to have started from where you are talking about slapping of a police officer in uniform. And mind you, behind those uniforms mm. are human beings like you and me with the same emotions. But, of course, they are professionals and they sometimes are trained to tolerate uh, certain circumstances and restrain for themselves, uh, you know, from acting emotionally. So I'm happy that you are able to confirm that there was, the, the, the genesis of that was um, a, an incident mm -hmm. where uh, the lady in, 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 in question did slap a police officer. And that's why I was saying to you that the police do not just react from nowhere. They get to those premises every other day. There are different criminal suspects that go to the courts on a daily basis. You rarely see them do that. But that one incidence was triggered by but, but two exactly the, the same day, Two actually on the same day. Uh, because I, I, I was there the entire day. I think we, we even went to Kawata Police Station mm. where one of the, you know, cadres of uh, the NDC was also dragged in an appropriate manner. Uh, and people keep wondering, Honorable Minister, you know, is this how the police are trained to, to, to act? Look, uh, the police uh, deal with different situations, different situations. And you, uh, in your area remarks, as we were talking about the mandate of the police, did talk about all forms of crime in enforcing the law. They deal with mm. all sorts of crimes. There are circumstances where they would approach you and talk to you. Andrew, we... Uh, come for you, we would like you to, uh, to escort us to the police so that we can interact with you and uh, uh, we uh, feel there's something that you need to answer to. You will say, okay, I'm, I'm available, we go, and you go. There are also circumstances where it's uh, battles, battles where even the police get injured as well. 
So circumstances mm. depend. So even when they use a bit of force, it should be proportional to the circumstances they're dealing with. So they just don't evoke the minimum force. But they are also mandated to use any means, any means to effect an arrest. There are circumstances where they are pursuing criminals who are armed. When you are attacked and you call them, they won't come... But and... in that regard, Mrs. Kambuli was not armed. No, you, you what, are, what, what type look, of force? Look, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't want to spend so much because I've explained yeah, yeah. the circumstances. Mm. That's just one off instance. And you know, let's not talk about circumstances because of the status. If you, me as Campiongo today mm. commit the same crime and you commit the same crime, we should not be judged because Campiongo has got this status. Yeah. You understand? Mm. Uh, 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 Andrew is of a different status. We shouldn't look at things like that. Yes, when we have got a status in society, mm. it goes with responsibility. How you conduct yourself in society also matters. And that's how you are also treated. And it's the same thing. When you are an offender, the way you react to the request to be questioned, to be held accountable for your action, also um, So technically, uh, she matters. deserved what she, she got. It's not about deserving. It's not about uh, the, the, the circumstance being, be, being good. We are saying it's a regrettable instance because it should have been avoided. Let's get to look at this second video, Honorable Minister, as we get you know, down to this particular conversation where uh, the leader of the main opposition, that is the UPND, uh, in Tuareg was, uh, you know, was in syringe and, thrown, and stones were thrown at him in full you know, view of the police. speak louder than words. Honorable Minister, you've watched the video. In full presence of the police, thrones were being stoned at an Have you seen that courage. clip, really? I've seen the clip. And I want you to analyze it properly. Those police officers were facilitating passage Indeed. Okay? Mm. of the motor, the, the, that's the motorcade. Yeah. And the tensions were high. Mind mm. you, Serenje is just after um, uh, uh, after Ravushmanda. Ravushmanda is between Peak and Serenje. That mm. motorcade had already been involved in very serious scuffles. Mm. All right. In fact, police acted much more professional there to, pass to facilitate passage of that motorcade, which should have been intercepted in the first place, in order to make the suspects who are mm. part of that entourage to account for the atrocities that were committed in Ravushmand. You understand? But against all odds, they facilitated that passage. And of course, the tensions were high because those people that were in that area could have heard what had already transpired mm. at Ravushmand, yeah. where the, police, the two police officers uh, 
uh, were, were abducted mm. uh, and, you know, only dropped on the way. Their weapon uh, grabbed from them. And so, and a few people injured. So those police officers, in managing the tension, obviously, I think, did a professional job by facilitating that passage and not when they should have intercepted those uh, that, that, that in that that motorcade you man you saw the way they tried to manage of course yeah. the tensions were high but they did manage to facilitate the passage so um to 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 say that uh, well, well, in that, terms of investigation i do know for a fact that investigations have begun mm -hmm. uh you know member of parliament for sashek has been called regarding the same incident to answer to questions mm -hmm. uh on that is uh, romeo kangombe I, I want to find out really if those gentlemen who are throwing stones at that motorcade have also been called to be questioned because i i, I, I do, are you endorsing whatever no, was happening no no what i'm saying to you is that first of all the police had to do one thing and for obviously now we are mm -hmm. talking if they dealt with the situation of those who are throwing thrones after that, that's another matter that we we may only get after we hear the, the, the preliminary investigation. That's where that, that could have uh, uh, taken place. So they had to do one thing. Mm -hmm. If they started chasing the people that were trying to destabilize, maybe they could have made the whole entire motor, uh, motorcade vulnerable to more attacks. So again, you can't judge the, the operation in one shot. Here, I'm not defending the police, and you must get me very clearly. But, but are you condemning the act of uh, throwing stones? That act cannot be tolerated, certainly. But your, your, your police officers, in the video, seemingly, hey, look, you know, uh, looked... Maybe we play it again. Maybe uh, we'll, First we'll of see. all, yeah. I don't even have to look at it twice. Here is the situation. They want to ensure that mm. the motorcade passes... Indeed. Okay? Mm. And, you know, the, a few, one or two people maybe, you know, you know uh, threw a stone mm. and they wanted to make sure that passage was facilitated. Then they deal with those culprits later on. So you can't judge from the single shot because you didn't know what then remained af happening after the, the, the motorcade had passed. So that we can only uh, get to understand when we look at the, 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 the investigations that were done. There's a general feeling, Honorable Minister, that you're presiding... Because, again, on the other flip side of things, that those people on the motorcade could have also attempted to, you know, to beat a few, uh, a few people um, at Serenje. You heard the, minister, the MP for Serenje uh, also coming complaining. Actually, before he left for his uh, father's funeral, he had to make sure that he posed a question to our owner, the vice president, regarding what transpired, because... He was also saying some of his people were injured by people that were And, and this is not the first time. So you minister. can't judge. This also happened in Kasama mm. when uh, you know, suspected PF cadres were, you know, were trying to break down the, 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 the you know, uh, you know, the, the vehicle, you know, uh, that belongs to the UP. And the same thing has happened. And, and really, in Brits, terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, the police, you know, uh, illegality being, uh, being, look, uh, being look, done look, in look. the presence the of the Kasa police. No, no, you know what. Um, it's very important that you know we we, we, we speak to these issues with um, with facts. You know, there's a lot of sensationalizing when a person and, and independent because the video clip that you saw in Kasama, yes, that barbaric action of the person who was damaging the car, yeah. we condemned it that same day. That same day, I was in Kasama. That day, we had the president addressing him some meetings in Kasama, and we condemned it. And we requested the police to make sure they pursued the, 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 the suspects. And they, 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 they were arrested, and as you know, they, 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 they were made to appear before the courts of law. But to say the police allowed that to happen is, again, a misrepresentation of fact. There was a, a police officer who was guarding a bank across. That's what the assignment was doing. So to abandon that, to come and attend to that, was not uh, something that was practical. So, yes, in your view, you say, oh, there's a police officer across the road. And probably because you're able to see and, you know, he, was, he didn't even know exactly, mm. probably he or she might not have known what was happening there. So in the eyes of the public, no, because there is a police officer there, mm. you expect that uh, something could have uh, been done by the police officer. Where there are shortcomings, we point these shortcomings out to the police. So it's not like we, we say they are, the, the police are uh, all here, they are angels, they are human beings.
Like I it, said, it, you it seems, as, seems as if the police are very scared of PF Kada, suspected PF Kada, and really the coincidence of uh, the police not, you know, taking state what, action. What would you say about the? the, the what would you say about? Minister, wait, 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 The coincidence wait, 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 of the yeah, police wait, 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 not taking. You are state saying action. the police are scared of who? The PF Kadas. It's seemingly. Oh, yeah. I think from the videos we are seeing, honourable, it seems. Uh, which one? Two which things one? come out. Which one and which one? Two things come out, honourable minister. I was just telling you, in Serenje, what caused that? You heard the MP for Serenja complaining, coming to raise a question in Parliament, that his people were crowbarred. So now, if the, 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 that commotion of uh, you know, people being attacked is what react, caused that reaction of throwing stones, how, how can you sing out a person from that clip and say that one is a PF card? Are you able to, to, to sing out for, for me that that one and that one is a PF card? Are you able to do that? Well, it's, Are it's, you able it's, to do that from that clip? Minister, it's, 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 it's common sense. No, really. you can't. It, what's common sense? It's That's, common sense. We don't expect uh, a UPND card to throw stones at a, at a fellow UPND card. I don't expect an ordinary citizen to throw stones at a UPN, at, at a UPND okay. motorhead. Can I ask you it, something? It doesn't make Can sense. Can I ask you Honourable something? Minister. You don't have a clip for a Vushmanda where two civil, civil servants were attacked. Mm. See, two ordinary civil servants. We attacked and hacked. You must have seen the, the cuts. So what, common sense, what does common sense tell you? What does common sense tell you? Honorable Minister. That same motorcade well, that was we, we allowed to pass. Yeah, we, we're referring to those two particular videos. And, and really, uh, and I'm sure you've heard assertions. Mm. Uh, and, and for me, uh, you know, uh, the coincidence of, uh, you know, police officers not taking state action against, uh, you know, PF cadres that, uh, you know, are into the job of... Uh, Probably that's why you've seen them now. The, co the coincidence breeds suspicion, uh. Uh, Honorable Minister, that... Uh, Obviously, you're presiding over police officers who are cadres of the Patriotic Front. And I think you've evaded these assertions. I, I want you to, to get me very clearly that the fact that I'm Minister of Home Affairs, I don't micromanage the operations of Zambia Police. Zambia Police is an institution with command structures from top to bottom. Even when you, where you saw the vehicles pass through mm. there, the, 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 the command at that point where in charge. Are you happy with the professionalism being exhibited by the Zambia Police Service? I'm content with it. I'm content. Honorable Minister, I would like to know how you find it easy to sleep knowing that uh, on the 13th of February 2020, Frank Mugala, a grade 8 juvenile shot dead during the police operation in Chazanga Township. How do you find it easy to sleep knowing that, uh, you know, uh, Shimunzila um, uh, Vespers died at the University of Zambia because of a cancer that was thrown uh, in her room? How do you find it easy to sleep, Honorable Minister, when a number of people have died out of, number one, police brutality, or, you know, they've died out of, uh, uh, you know, the negligence by the police? How do you find it easy to go to bed, Honorable Minister, and sleep? This is under your watch. How do I find what? How do you, how, how do you find it easy to sleep? <laughs> uh, I wish you could have rephrased it well. But, uh, but, but I will answer you in this fashion, that as minister responsible mm -hmm. for uh, home affairs, which oversees police, okay? Mm. I don't find it easy because I have to make sure that you are safe. So I don't sleep easy for you to be safe now. When you talk about the losses of those lives, you also must know that the procedures that are put in place, where exercises mm -hmm. are used, are evoked. There was an inquiry, you were just referring to the, uh, the university incidents. There was an inquiry, and you followed the inquiry, and the recommendations have been done. And in all these cases, and that's why we collaborate very well with the Human Rights Commission, because they, too, do an oversight function in terms of investigations. And they forward recommendations to the ministry. And we act on those recommendations. But you must know that um, uh, maintaining law and order mm. and peace is a mammoth task everywhere in the world. And these public police um, uh, tensions 
are always out there in the world. Mm. Why, is the, why, is, why, why is there police? If we human beings were living like angels, like brothers and sisters, eh? in harmony, there wouldn't be need for police. I want you to, 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 to listen, to understand. Property. Exactly. And, and, and protect life, not exactly. to take our life. But you, what, you, what your police service? What your how many police? lives have been taken? Quite a and how many lives one, have been protected one, on the day? One is many a number, Honorable Minister. Young man, don't pray around with peace. One don't, is many a number, Minister. Don't pray around with peace. You don't see people. You know these police officers work on a daily basis. If in, at all, they were working in the manner you are trying to project to the public, how many but, lives but could the, have been lost? Honorable Minister, these are, these are facts that are already in public domain. No, You're trying to project look, a look. picture that is not existing. Look, look, you should look at statistics and look at the circumstances that could have generated into loss of lives. There's a country up north, regrettably as we speak now, where order breaks down. Lives are lost. Lives are lost. You must understand that. And you mm. as a media person, you follow the, the, the international media uh, channels now. And you have seen what happens every, elsewhere. Elsewhere, people fire without uh, even thinking twice. Where you have a totalitarian society. Mm. Even near by here. Well, I, I, so, I'm happy that you, you've spoken you, about circumstances. Exactly. So you should you shouldn't listen. When a country is benchmarked to be the most, one of the peaceful countries, central part of Africa, you must understand that it takes all those things that you're talking about into account. So yes, a few lives lost, mm. not good enough. But when you weigh the scale of how many lives are protected on a daily basis, you find that you are actually much more peaceful as a nation than many other countries. I, I love the fact that you've, you, you've spoken about circumstances under which uh, some of these, you know, uh, things have been And that's done. why we say it's always important not mm. to be disorderly to the point which then gets a different reaction. But what, we have, what have we done as government? Realizing that we need to equip our police with necessary tools to deal with different circumstances. You have seen us procuring um, mm. modern equipment for them so that uh, they lessen the circumstances of using uh, live ammunition. All is being done to mm. avoid the same loss of lives that you are referring to. That's what the responsible uh, government that does. You, 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 that's what I, a responsible the government said. does. A responsible government will not uh, fire live ammunition uh, in a public place, uh, you know, where, where, where we, we, we had the death of a young, innocent, so honorable minister, Frank Mugala, only eight years honorable minister. That was a very regrettable incident, uh, like I said. And, 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 but and, you and, see, and I would love to listen, know listen. whether state action has been taken against that police officer, you know, that fired live ammunition. Uh, investigations have been done, recommendations have, 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 have been put forward, and I think uh, the process is, uh, is ongoing, and indeed, uh, Whoever will be found one I'll have to we'll know also to what, account. you know, just I know for a fact that you've acquired equipment to help in these other issues, but I'll, I'll have to know what proper plan your, your ministry is taking to ensure that some of these cases are indeed avoided. That's what I'm saying. You only make sure that you equip the police with proper equipment to use at different circumstances. That's what I was saying, the existence of police is because we know that we as human beings, you know, sometimes, you know, can, uh, can, you know, can get out of order. That's why we've got police. Had it been for that, we wouldn't have police if we were just like, oh, change and go home. So the police in Chazanga didn't have right equipment to protect life. I do know for a fact that they had guns. That's the reason why they killed one. What, what right equipment, you know? Uh, it was a very unfortunate incident, like I said. But you imagine if uh, at all they, they went on rampage and we lost more than one life. That would have been extremely unprofessional. So that incident, and as we are investigating to mm -hmm. find out exactly how 
that uh, firearm was discharged by the person who was handling it, mm. and those that were giving instructions, then we zero in. And you know, it doesn't please us because we get officers punished. Officers end up in uh, correctional service for such things. Yeah, but uh, under what circumstances are police officers allowed to, uh, you know, to fire a on mission? There are various circumstances, and those are operational matters of the, the Zambia police. But they are mandated to use that, the various equipment they have, mm. including firearms. I'm getting worried, Honorable Minister. Um, you lamented on Sunday last week mm -hmm. that there are some police officers who are abducted, beaten, terribly beaten by UPND cadres. And I'm worried why, because we're headed towards the 2021 general elections. I'm meant to believe that the police officers are the ones that are supposed to protect us. If those mandated to protect us are being beaten, in the way he had painted this, you know, it in our, in, in our minds. Are we safe, Honorable Minister, as we approach the general elections? Um, well, that is that, again, regrettable, regrettable as it is. That goes back to the same water kit that you were playing, the clip you were playing. Now, you imagine at least there in Serenje, there were a reasonable number of police officers. Mm. At the point where those two officers were abducted, they were just the two of them. Mm. And he also in trying to make sure that they, they, I can't go into details of what transpired really, except to say it was very unfortunate. But I want to say this, that um, the police as a service are also um, uh, very worried and concerned. Uh, so apart from just making those that did uh, what they did in abducting those officers, they will have to put measures in place to ensure mm. that um, members of the public are well protected. Because probably if we had enough manpower, those who were injured at Lavushmanda couldn't have been injured. The two police officers who were abducted could not have been uh, abducted. So I think it's a wake-up call. Uh, to the Zambia Police Service to ensure that they put measures in place. But I can assure the members of the public that mm. uh, uh, apart from the measures we are putting in place as government by equipping them properly, they too have uh, uh, embarked on putting measures in place such as taking their officers for refresher courses mm. in order to prepare them for the tasks ahead. Mm. All right. Qu quite a number of issues, Honorable, that we are supposed to discuss, one of which is... Uh, you know, how committed you are, especially as the Zambia Police Service, to ensure that you end political violence, because I think political violence has been on the rise. Every time we have a by-election, one of the things that characterize uh, by-elections is political violence. How committed is the ministry, uh, you know, especially as we get to a very critical year, that is 2021, to end political violence? Well, on their part, the police will be uh, uh, are preparing mm -hmm. adequately in order to deal with the violent the violence that uh, uh, characterize uh, elections in some cases. Mm. But also, beyond the police, it's, it's all of us, the players. All of us, as stakeholders, have got a role to play. Because uh, we know that canvassing for people's support certainly mm. can be done without violence. If I'm a member of parliament today, what is it that I'm able to point at for the people that elected me in order for them to continue having confidence in me? That doesn't require me to go with people to go and beat them. It doesn't work. So people must be given um, an environment where they assess to say, look, yes, we think you have performed to our expectations. Or indeed, now we want to try someone else. Mm. That's the whole mark of a democracy, and that's how it is. That's why we go to campaign. We don't go to say, let's go, the more people you beat, the more people vote for you. It doesn't work that way. So beyond the police, there, also, there is also need for all of us stakeholders, political parties, non-governmental institutions, and also the Electoral Commission of, uh, of Zambia, mm. because in enforcing the uh, Electoral Act, yeah. They, 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 they've got also um, measures that they have to put in place, which will also probably include disqualifying people that are using 
uh, you know, um, a violent means. It's just like football. They're like an empire. They're like a referee. If you go to play football, you must play smart and so that you compete and win. The referee is there to, so, to, 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 to check out those that want to think by breaking other people's legs. Then they can win the game. So that's the approach we should take. It should not be left to the police alone. But I've seen the police are already being proactive by engaging uh, various stakeholders, including political parties, in ensuring that the political parties put measures in place to manage themselves. Issues of public order, act, you know, Honorable Minister, very critical. Um, it's so sad, Honorable Minister, and I'm sure you've been following the news, how when anybody wants to protest against privatization, they are free to do so. We had an incident in Livingstone. I, I just don't know whether the clip is ready. We had an incident in Livingstone peacefully protested. We had an incident right here in Lusaka where a consortium of civil society organizations, including uh, student unions, you know, paraded themselves all the way to State House. You know, I, I think, you uh, know, you, uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, listen, I haven't asked my question. Monster, 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 Honorable Minister, I've not asked my question. You're a journalist. You're a, journal listen, listen, question. you're a journalist. I want you to use proper terms. When you are saying an incident, you, you know, when you are saying a procession, so that you, you, you know, I am able to respond to you properly. If you say there was a procession in Livingstone, which this minister is also saw just as you did, there was a procession, but not paraded. It makes me difficult to understand. To understand. Okay, so you... Yeah. You, 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 Maybe use of terminology because exactly. of, the, of the fact that we're using uh, uh, a Queen's language, that is English. I know, but you're a journalist, you're a professional. Don't yeah, but, 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 yeah. But, 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 but let's get to the issue, Honorable Minister. I think people feel, uh, civil society organizations and, and some political parties, I should make mention, feel... There's an unfair application of uh, the rule of law in terms of uh, those that are issued uh, with the right to protest. Not so long ago, we did see uh, the police officers not granting permission for UPND and NDC to protest against uh, their displeasure over ECZ. What is happening? Again, that's, uh, why, uh, uh, that's uh, why it's important to, to, you know, to, to, to do a bit of research on these things. I'll start with uh, the, the two examples I've given, mm. the procession in Livingston. Mm. If people um, notify the police and say, we are walking five meters from that point, and we are going to point B, yep. where we want to go and hand over our petition, the police will prepare for that procession, mm. okay? Because there's adequate information, and the, the measures they need to put in place, how, are you, how is this procession going to affect other uh, members of the public yep. mm. uh, flow of traffic if it's on the road for how long is it going to take so those are things that you the, 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 you discuss with the police as you are not finding them so if those people fulfilled those requirements they were given a go ahead and that's that, that's what they did you are talking about the students that did the petition probably you didn't even see them until they got to a state house where they were going according to what they had were planned and those that were managing the procession, they get there without disturbing anyone, go and hand over the, 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 the petition, and off they go. No commotion, no nothing. So you can't say it's an incident. It was a procession well managed. We had a few other processions that have been done. Mm. But, well, you are referring to the, well, what is to the, the NDC. Yeah. There's no fear at all. The NDC. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry, the NDC wait a minute. Minister. That's what I'm saying. You need to research on some of these yeah, things. But, but these and I want to give you the facts. This is the news. No, no, we are the ones who run the news. And we are there when these things are happening. Also, the issue of uh, you know, a, a, a group of artists. You were there when they were writing the letter? The letter? To the police? No, but, but, but when, when, the, 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 when they responded, they handed over the letter to us and we carried it in the news. And so I'm not speaking things did from, you see the letter from, that from my dreams. I'm did speaking to issues. I did see the letter. Which I wrote to them. The response uh, to the letter from the police, we did see it. That's what I'm saying. You should have followed through. The uh, response was that there was not enough, enough man manpower. That was a response, Honorable Minister. Uh, from the police? Yes. And what followed? You tell me. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You should have gone further to find out. Mm. Okay? You should have gone further to find out. Because they had also followed the channel of the, pro the, the, the public order act and appealed it to my office, and I provided guidance. What is the guidance on what, you provided? On what, on what needed to be done. What is your guidance? 
So what, what was your guidance? There were two actually omissions on the, 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 the notification. There was a letter aid for uh, UPND, okay? Mm. And then there were two signatories at the bottom, NDC and UPND. UPND is a different, um, is an independently registered society with Red Soul societies and the Ministry of Home Affairs. Okay? Mm. NDC is a separately registered entity. So that was omission number one. So I told them to regularize that and then to just give this, the, 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 the details of the procession and how they wanted to, uh, uh, to conduct it. And they were assured that they were going to be given after, date. after feeling that. Mm. Yeah, so Maybe just give an assurance, Honorable Minister, because uh, maybe what millions of, of Zambians get from these political parties are maybe are lies, all right? The perception that is there, Honorable Minister, is that um, uh, the opposition is being oppressed in terms of uh, expressing their freedoms to protest. When they want to protest, you refuse them to protest. I, I, I did give an example of... Uh, uh, the gentlemen and uh, some ladies wanted to protest. We, we ended up being, you know, pr protesting in, in the bush. Uh, a group of artists wanted to protest. They ended up being protesting. That, that painted a very bad picture. You what, know, what, on, on the, what time was that? What time was that? You know that we had uh, 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 COVID nineteen. Exactly. Uh, and, and, and uh, precisely that's so, a question. So those are things I, I, that I wanted to, to clear to to, mm. to, to, to to some of the Zambians that believe that look. The opposition have been oppressed, all right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the circumstances that you provide for them are right circumstances. Like, for example, you've mentioned that there was COVID-19 at that time, mm -hmm. and so there was no way that people would have protested. But, but I want you to give a clear assurance to the people of Zambia that there's no political party, there's no opposition political party that has been oppressed in terms of their right to protest. Certainly, you as um, media institutions have been able to cover events. You have been hosting. You host me today. Tomorrow you'll be hosting the, the, the opposition. This is how it is. Today, as we are speaking, they are counting votes in, uh, in, in, in Chilubi mm. and campaigns in tailed meetings, public gatherings. And they, they, there's, no one part, there's, there's more than one party there that participated. Which participated yeah. Okay, and so all those parties were uh, participating. It was the same the previous by elections we had. Mm. People were having meetings, competing, and schedules of meetings being given to the police, and the meetings were being held. So I really don't know. And now that uh, we, we are getting uh, the, the, the seemingly that COVID uh, threat is going down, and when we get recommendation from the Minister of Health, it will be open for everyone to engage. That's what democracy is all about. The fact that we have allowed, I'm, I'm Minister of Home Affairs, and mm -hmm. under my watch, the Ministry of Societies has, has registered more than 60 political parties. The fact that we accept to register political parties, we are saying we are allowing competition. So if we are at, on one hand, we are accepting to register political parties, how can then we go and close up and say, don't participate in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in engaging the people? It doesn't work. I used to, I used to pretend on the register of societies. You have seen new, people, new parties coming up and joining the old ones. Why? Because we know that democracy is the way to go. That's what we have chosen for ourselves, plural politics. And so you can't on one hand register mm. and say, no, 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 you can't participate. How does it work? It doesn't. Do you think sometimes your position as minister responsible for home affairs conflicts politics? How? Maybe you are very soft towards your party, where you come from. Do you think... You know, it, it, in some way, it does conflict. It doesn't, it doesn't conflict. My friend, this is not for the faint-hearted. It doesn't conflict me because where the, the, the police are working, I don't micromanage them. I don't decide who they should arrest because I don't, I don't go to stand in the dock. And that's why sometimes it shocks me to say, you know, I directed this one to be arrested. How? Because, it, you know, law enforcement does not end up at arresting only. It ends up at going to court mm. and people prosecuted. 
That's why now we have got an independent institution, which is the National Prosecution Authority, which then picks up from the police to go and prosecute. Yeah. If I had to say, look, I was telling you about the, 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 the other portfolio functions. There's correctional service in order maintenance. There's immigration, drug enforcement, race of societies, Department of National Registration, Passports and Citizenship, among others. Eh? And the Commissioner for Refugees, and many other departments. So if I had to focus on me, only what police does, then I can't run the Minister of Home Affairs. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say conflict because of police, look, and you know, we don't work with emotions. If you, you screamed here, headlines, Honorable Kampiongo's young brother arrested, was suspected of being in, uh, in, 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 in violent activities. How do you feel, your own brother, spending uh, more than a week in police cells and your Minister of Home Affairs? But because mine is not to look at who when it comes to issues of committing crime. Well, I think the, the general so, perception that is there so, is so, so that my the law dear that we use in Zambia has got eyes. It's, got, uh, it's blind. When it I've, got a lot of, a lot, I've got a lot of cadres that have, uh, you know, political party cadres that have been arrested, tried, and thrown to correction service. Why? Because they've committed a crime. But just so a, that's what I'm saying. Just so, to ride on that one, uh, mm. you know, I, 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 I guess you're not hearing these things on this platform for the first time. I, I hope so, Honorable Minister. Yeah. And, and some of these questions that I'm advancing, these are questions that are directly coming from the people of Zambia. A, an incident happened uh, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, leader of the opposition, uh, UPND, was barred uh, from seeing his colleague, you know, at, uh, uh, at Kamwala. Barred by who? Well, uh, the, the, the guards there, they said uh, you needed to, to get a pass from uh, clearance from, the mini from, 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 from your office, Minister of Home Affairs. And, and, and my question is, what law was used really to, to bar someone from going to, see, to, to, to visit someone in prison? First of all, correctional facilities are restricted areas. Okay? And the schedules are given on when those areas can be visited. And then an officer in charge responsible for a correctional facility is responsible for admitting people to see our people in those correction services. And there's a structure also there. Again, I told you, so again, now you imagine, if you had to control who goes to the correction service, I also had to control who should be arrested. What sort of human being could I be, in, in, in your view? Today, as I'm sitting here, there are police officers all over the country doing their work. So if they arrest a certain individual, how would they? It shows how powerful you are, Minister. It shows how powerful you are. So uh, tell me. It seems you're the most powerful person, you know, in Zambia. Uh, no, but look, not, no, not to the extent of abusing that authority. I can't be superhuman to micromanage these institutions. It is not possible. Immigration admitting people coming in and out of the country. I should know and say, don't allow that one to come in. Uh, is that uh, what the bit of us should be? Mm. But, 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 but. <laughs> People are getting NRCs. I should say, no, don't give an NRC to that one. So you, you say that there are schedules for seeing, you know, you know anybody in the correctional service. Yes. Uh, at the time that uh, HH went to visit Kambuili, mm. it, it was out of the time. How would I know? I don't even know. It, this issue didn't come before your office? Me? They were, they were taught to get clearance from your office. How? If they were told to, 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 to get clearance, what sort of clearance? That's what I'm asking you. And, what and, sort of, and, and, and you can ask me because how much, I want to ask how you. How much more work can I do? Listen yes. to me. And, and just what, before I listen to you, Honorable Minister, mm. let's just get to look at this video. Maybe you hear it for, you, from your, for yourself, mm. uh, what uh, the leader of uh, UPND said. And maybe we can have a very smooth conversation. Director, if you can have that video uh, where HH was uh, denied entry to see uh, Kamwili. Then, that was in waiting here for well over 40 minutes, well over 40 minutes, and we are within visiting hours, regulated, legal visiting hours. 
and the, those inside this prison have a right to be visited. We who are outside have a right to visit those inside. No one should stand in between unless those standing in between agree that this is a demonstration of a breakdown in the rule of law. No order, no leadership, nothing. Chipante, chipante. That's what's going on. So, but the first thing to do is what has been told since I was not inside. All I know is that it's my right to visit Sike when I was in prison. He came to visit me. He had a right. That is true. It's my right to visit him. It is his right to be visited. So who should stand in between? Only rogues stand in between. But I know the prison officers here are not the ones who are responsible for this. It is the political leadership of the PF, which really has nothing to do with it. Rogues, Honorable Minister. Uh, you didn't allow HH to, to, to see his friend. Um, your answer is that uh, there are schedules, there are visiting so, hours, uh, and um, well, I, I would love to know, Honorable Minister, a clear answer from you in terms of um, um, what law provides for, uh, or what policy, you know, is there in terms of one visiting someone that is, is in the correctional service? First of all, I want to comment on that clip. Yes, Honorable Minister, you can go ahead. That clip was just a public stunt. Do you understand? And is the, the person who was saying Chipante Pante is the one doing Chipante Pante, in my view. Because he, he's contradicting himself that he wanted to see someone not going to visit them, him when he was incarcerated. Mm. So, how does it uh, then happened that he had to go and to be go and video to be videoed and to show I've stopped. Who was which politician was there? Was I there to dream that he was going to do a public stunt on that particular day? Am I programmed to his uh, uh, public stunt? I'm not. And like I said, that's an institution that is managed by rules and regulations. And with this COVID. 19 pandemic, I pronounced the, the restrictions that we are going to, to put in place that for the correction service to, to enforce. So I can't, I can't be swayed by that public stunt. Zero. But the law is the same. It applies. It across. applies to anyone, whether you're Kainde or anyone else. Doesn't matter. And we don't look at the status of uh, someone. And the officers who were on duty must have explained. Another issue that people of Zambia want to find out, Honorable Minister, is an update regarding the gas in situation. Mm. Where are we? Uh, those matters are active in court. And uh, if I have, uh, as interested as media, it's important to follow through those matters in the courts of law. So those are still under investigations? No, they, well, uh, the investigations were done. The public, uh, the National Prosecution Authority mm. uh, took those matters to court. And I'm sure you recall that uh, the, 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 uh, there was a Benole and the arresting of yeah. the suspects. And so we leave those matters mm. for the courts to yeah. adjudicate upon. Another critical issue that people of Zambia want to find out is that you are tasked uh, by the President of the Republic of Zambia, Dr. Edgar Chagualungu, His Excellency, to find the owners of the 48 hours. What's the update? I wasn't tasked to find the owners. That was a matter that was uh, handled by the... Um, and corruption and commission, yes, yeah. and um, I think uh, the, 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 when the, uh, the the matters were not taken to court, the president re requested that you know the other law enforcement agencies that falls under the Ministry of Home Affairs probably mm -hmm. supplements the efforts of uh, the anti-corruption commission, and uh, so that was done. And I think the, 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 the matters are again being taken up uh, by the competent uh, authority of the National Prosecution Authority who are um, supposed to prosecute that matter. Another critical issue that, uh, you know, uh, b before I can ask this question, I want to find out from you how uh, the issuance of uh, green national registration you know, across the country has been moving. What, what, is, what is your assessment? Are we... Are we, are we on the right path? 
First of all, the mandate to recognize citizens and uh, register them um, and uh, to, uh, as, as citizens so that they can enjoy the privileges and rights of a Zambian citizen is a mandate that the Department of National Registration, Passport and Citizenship mm. um, executes on a daily basis in all the districts from Monday to Friday of every week, all the weeks of the month. And uh, if you are referring to the what we call national mobile mobile registration, mobile exactly. registration and mm. issuance of NRCs is an exercise that we do periodically in order to give access to people that are in far flung areas who might not have it easy to, to go register. to the uh, uh, established offices mm. to register and to be registered after attaining the mandatory age of 16. Mm. And uh, those that could have lost their NRCs and those whose NRCs could have been damaged, that's an opportunity that is given them to them in order to, uh, uh, to repress NRCs. So we were normally in the past, this uh, was being done in phases uh, mm -hmm. of three months. We were supposed to start uh, uh, at the beginning of the second quarter of the year. Yeah, but you uh, do recall that's when we were uh, faced with this COVID-19. And so we couldn't start. Um, so we had to look at the possible way of undertaking the exercise bearing in mind that uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia were also going to be registering citizens who have uh, attained the mandatory age of 18 mm -hmm. uh, to vote. So we had to work with limited space, and I must commend the Minister of, Minister of Finance and his team for making resources available uh, to the Ministry uh, for this exercise to be undertaken. We had challenges, of course, because most of the equipment that is used is to be imported um, uh, from outside the country uh, for our officers to use in the field. So we um, segmented the exercise in two phases mm. and assigned um, and gave tw 40 days to each exercise. And so the first phase, which um, uh, catered for the five initial provinces, uh, you know, was completed, and now we are in the second phase of the exercise of the other five provinces. Well, talking about giving the NRC's given rights to citizens, it happens, Honorable Minister, that under your watch, a lot of wrong things are happening. It seemed others are having more rights than the others. Just last week, I was seated here with uh, members from the UPN who exposed the illegality happening around the issuance of NRCs. It happens that other individuals are getting more than two NRCs. Are you aware of that, Honorable Minister? Actually, those are suspects. Those uh, people that we came we had here are suspects because what they should have done, if they noted that anomaly, the right place to go to was the uh, authorities. They should have reported that matter to the police. And in the uh, aftermath of the attack of a team in Kasama, which were issuing, the team that were issuing NRCs, by the same grouping that you're talking about. We have, the police have been investigating uh, this matter to account for the materials that got lost from that uh, criminal activity. And so those uh, people you hosted will be needed to help with investigations because that's what a responsible citizen must do. They must be able to point where they got those items Mm. But the, the issue is, it doesn't matter whether they got them mm. now, as well as speak. I do know for a fact that that is, is a big issue. But I, I did see them right on this table, Honorable Minister. One, uh, you know, one face having more than two uh, identity numbers, having more than two names. That is one individual, Honorable Minister. That is more than, uh, you know... An, That's what I'm a, saying. So a, if a, those people came, really. listen to me... Mm. And you have to understand very well, you are a Zambian, you had a chance to go and get to an RC. I did. You did? Yes. Through your interaction with those officers, do you think the process you went through would permit someone to have an NRC but, such as what you... I'm asking you. No, it's, 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 I want us to have a conversation. Exactly, exactly. Because you are a Zambian, 
mm. who has gone through a process of getting registered and giving, given an NRC. During that process of you getting an NRC, would you point at any given point where you end up with such circumstances? Just honestly? And well, obviously not. Obviously no, Honorable Minister. That, that, that is impossible. Exactly. Unless, so you know, what happens is the same process we went through is the same process people go through, even where they are having mobile issuance of NRCs. I was with your, your fellow journalist just last, uh, last week or so when we went to southern province where the reports which were coming to you as a media were portraying a picture that no NRCs were being issued there. Mm. You had uh, uh, your colleague with us in the entourage. And I'm sure you saw for yourselves what is happening on the ground. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Those two you had here are potential suspects. Because to try and discredit a national exercise like that cannot be tolerated. And I was giving you just a classic example because as Zambians, we must start, you know, seeing things for what they are. The process... We don't send, just pick people from the street and say, you go and start issuing NRCs. That's why we get civil servants who can be held accountable, who work with officers from the department, who are professionals at it. And we make sure that we attach departments such as the immigration department to ensure that non-foreigners do not take advantage of that exercise to acquire our NRCs. Wow. Um, so, we have been, and you saw uh, there are a number of cases that are being investigated. Yeah. You go and get children, uh, very young children, innocent children, get the NRCs from elderly people, give them to these young children, take a picture, and you circulate on social media, all in the yes. attempt to discredit the, 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 yeah. the process. So, I'm telling you that there are some unpatriotic Zambians mm. who, for their selfish motives are, are trying by all means to discredit uh, this process mm. but so to be honest, at the end of the day at the end of the day listen to me listen to me what you're saying at the end of the day we are very confident with the officers that we have sent in the field that they're doing a, a wonderful job and i must commend them because some of them are sleeping in classroom blocks leaving their comfort comfortable homes to go and work and save their fellow Zambians. And I had an interaction with my colleagues, even from the, the, the opposition members of parliament, mm. who were, were bringing a few challenges that they thought were challenges. Yeah. But we harmonized them on the ground. Because every Zambian is entitled to get an NRC. And not more than one in the RC. No, that's criminal. Uh, 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 that's criminal. Actually. Precisely my And that's point, what I'm saying. Those who point, came here. Th those were real NRCs. On the that, very real that's NRCs. That's what I'm saying. The best thing those people could have done, if they were sincere and patriotic, they, they, and not playing political uh, games, as they did, you know, and um, they, 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 we shall get them to just account and help them. And help the, 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 the government to zero in on who mm. could have uh, done and that. And the assertion is that you, this entire thing is calculated and planned in order for the Patriotic Front to rig elections. You know, you know, you know this is a problem. And, uh, you know, elections are not being held for the first time. Mm. And mind you, we shall be migrating from the manual and paper-based civil registration processes. You have seen us intensifying in birth registration. So that from birth, you are able to identify a citizen up to the time it becomes 16. These are processes that are going on. And we are going digital, just as you have seen us automating some of the government services, immigration, and the issuance of passports. We are, going, we are doing the same immediately after the elections. Right now, we are just building up the processes. So if someone wants to make a mistake now, and I'm appealing to our citizens, that don't, don't give force um details to the officers because if, because that's a, that's a, that's a, a criminal as well yeah so those who think they'll get away with getting false identifications very soon it will be catching up because we shall be migrating to the digital platforms in terms of civil registration and the regime of the cards will change
So it won't pay anyone. Already, some of them who thought they were smart, when Smart Zambia came to automate the, the, the process of, of um, farmer input support program, they got caught up. Because you can't beat the system. And if you want to think you can get a two NRCs and you are, you are going to cheat the Electoral Commission of Zambia, it won't help. And that's why you are hearing the Electoral Commission of Zambia saying they want to tighten up to make sure that if you go as, uh, as Mwansa, you are going to have your fingerprints lifted to go into the system. You understand? Mm. So you will have an NRC you present your fingerprints in addition to that, and the system will pick your details. The time you go to vote, when you vote and you put your fingerprints, the system will pick that, yes, Mwansana has voted. So you are not going to go to the next place and attempt to do the same because the system will be foolproof. And that's what we are going to also build in as we change the, uh, the regime in terms of identity cards. So the, you can't be smart. You can't. So if you think you can get two NRCs and you think you are going to... To, to cheat the electoral mission of Zambia, you will be you, you get caught get up. You have to get two NRCs also, two you know, voters with stressing cards also, if you're going to get two NRCs. Does it mean now that uh, the assertion by the opposition that for you, from the patriotic front, elections are a matter of life and death? is not true. It's not a matter of life and death. Mind you, the patriotic front is coming from the opposition. We were in the opposition before we formed government. And we competed to be elected to form government. And so it can't be life and death because the people of Zambia will determine uh, 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 how much they, 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 are, they, 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 they want the, the Patriot Front to begin government. And that's why you have seen us working throughout from the time we, we, we were elected with our late president of uh, May so rest in peace, President Sata. We, we went into elections the presidential by-elections where President Ed Galungu emerged as winner. Some of the people that he beat had competed in elections before. You understand? Yeah. So, President Lungu was coming to the fore <laughs> only after we lost President Sat. And we went into another election in 2016. And again, it's very interesting because you see now the way Electoral Commission of Zambia is improving mm. There is nowhere, if you are contesting with me in the same constituents, we finish voting and our representatives are watching. They have prayed. And the votes are there for everyone to see. There are trays. Tray for Mwansa, tray for Kampiongo, tray for the other person. They count. And you are seeing everyone is there to see how the, 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 the trays are fighting up. Then you start counting and everybody is there to see. It's real time. So those who are saying, no, rigging, rigging where? How because you, you and I, if you are, listen, if you are competing, you and I, in the constituency. I think we should. Honorable. Yes, <laughs> we should try. <laughs> it will be very nice. We want to see a lot of youths to come on board. Mm. And that's why we want to make sure that uh, the, 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 the constitution is, uh, changed. Is, is, uh, is changed to accommodate vibrant youths like yourself to come on board. But what I'm saying is that it's just meat. But you know, when you lose too much, Losing also can become a sickness, and you can become a danger. So everything you are seeing, you can't cry to, you can't be crying to the referee. If you are playing football, you will see football. People, the referee, you will just be, the team wins on the pitch. And the referee will just say, oh yeah, this is how it is. And the electoral commission of Zambia are not going to, if you are competing with me, going to help you or going to help me. Mr. referees are bust. How? I think we've seen. But, but, but my, my last question to you, on now, uh, my last question. So, the, what, what the, the, the Electoral Commission of Zambia is saying, they would have uh, the, 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 the people registered, mm. and when we go to canvas, it's not the Electoral Commission of Zambia who is going to canvas for support for you and me. It's ourselves. As when we go with our striker, Edgar Chagwarungu, others will also have other. Uh, strikers. Strikers. Mm -hmm. But how would you and Zambians remember you? If you had to die today, how would you and Zambians remember your honorable? Well, to, to, to remember me as a citizen who had an opportunity to save the nation in the capacity I'm saving and who wanted to see things different, not doing business as usual. Who wanted to leave a legacy of bringing dignity 
to his men and women in uniform who have been looked down upon in the past. Uniform should be, was an issue for a police officer who is saving your life and my life and protecting your property. No decent accommodation. It was just they, 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 they exist only when you need their services. I want to be remembered that those people that are in incarceration, we have been talking about congestion from his time in memorial. Today, under the Patriot Front government, with our president Edgar Chagorungu at the helm of government, we are building new correctional facilities so that these who complain that no, we, you know, everybody should be given uh, time to enjoy their human rights, they enjoy their human rights. We started the transformation of correctional services way before, just immediately we came into government. From the time we attained independence, it's the mm -hmm. first time we have opened the correction facilities, new correction facilities. Immigration department, this is a unit that is responsible for making sure that our borders only allow people that are desirable and those that are going out are regretted. They never even had a place they could go, a camp, in terms of housing. But these are men that work day and night, just like the police officers. But today we are saying you, are you, you need to, to dignify you as professionals that are toiling for the Republic of Zambia. Drug Enforcement Commission. These are the people that make sure that the, 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 uh, uh, these uh, undesirable substances, money laundering activities mm -hmm. in order to preserve the economy of this, the state, working day and night. No equipment, no modern equipment, but you, the, 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 the times are changing. So I would like to, with the support of His Excellency the President, to leave the Minister of Home Affairs transformed so that those that will come, I'm on tour of duty, and I'm very alive to the fact that I am on tour of duty, and certainly the tour of duty will come to an end. But I'm, what should I point back at? Where you go, it will be present to go and see my name in, in, you know, on the new housing units, and our officers are coming out like human beings. Honorable Minister, That's I want to thank you so much for having made time to appear on the assignment. After so much, uh, you know, uh, so much time to want to get you, finally you've come and we've had a conversation. I'll certainly be a very and when uh, time permits, and uh, it's our duty to uh, ensure that we, we give information to I hope we still be good friends. And I want to, uh, we are very good friends. For me, that's how it works. I want to assure the people of Zambia that what we are doing is for the interest of the people of Zambia. I told you that the other mandate I have is that of looking after people who have run away from places called homes, displaced, because they have been uprooted out of homes as a result of conflict in those countries, refugees. I wouldn't want, under the president, Edgar Chagwarungu, His Excellency, his watch to have our people running away to another country. Because I've seen how people lose dignity mm. when they become refugees. Honorable so mine is to just make sure that I contribute in uh, my, my small capacity mm. to maintaining the peace that we have enjoyed since independence. Again, allow me to say thank you so much. Once again, it's also to wish you uh, yeah. happy Independence Day. Thanks. Once my guest has been Honorable Stephen Campiongo, Minister responsible for Home Affairs. My name is Andrew Mwansa. Thank you so much to my producer, Mavuto Piri, my director, Sedlis in Konjera, and uh, Innocent Piri. For now, good night and enjoy the rest of our programming.